Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's Busiest Music Nerd. Hope you're doing well. And in this video, we're going to be doing a bit of a conversation, sort of an impromptu interview uh, with my guest here, who is a motivational speaker. He is a rapper. He's a songwriter. Um, what, what else am I forgetting? What, what, what else am I forgetting there? Is, is there something else you'd add to that list? Uh, no, I think, I think you nailed it on the head pretty good there. Motivational rapper and speaker is about sums okay. it up. Entrepreneur, risk taker. <laughs> dreamer <laughs> mr uncle adams himself how you doing dude good good to be so here. uh uncle adams and i had uh, i i don't know i guess you'd say a bit of a tiff on the internet recently and we've decided to come on here to essentially just like bury the hatchet and clear up a few things and and talk about a few things just like with music and internet culture here um it's it's come to my attention since watching uh you know, your videos talking about uh, my reactions to your music and just uh, uh, generally the reactions to your music online that you've sort of uh, suffered a lot of harassment over the past 14 months or so um, uh, as, as a result of just a lot of very overzealous and very nasty trolls. Um, would, would you be able to sort of uh, speak to that a little bit? Yeah, sure. So... You know, you did a review on my song original in January of 2017. Mm. And after that review, it kind of opened the floodgates of negativity on my social media accounts. Because you're, you're an influential person. And I, I'm, not, I'm not blaming you. It's not all you. I think there was already a group of people that were kind of trolling on me. And they thought, hey, if we can get Anthony to do a video sort of dissing this too, it can help us grow the amount of people that are disliking Uncle Adams and stuff. As weird as that is, I really think that's the, There are quite so. a few people who watch what I do who are pretty closely connected to the meme community and like right. the original posting page on Facebook or or people who sort of follow those kinds of meme pages on Facebook are, are basically within that community. And I was getting a lot of requests to like, hey, listen to the guys, this guy's music, try this guy's music, listen to this guy's music. And uh, so, yeah, there actually like was kind of a flood of requests. Like I didn't just merely stumble upon your music and I was like, oh, yeah, I got to talk about this. So I got to cover this. There was like actually like a flood of requests saying you got to watch this. You got to react to it. You got to talk about yeah. it. So there was definitely like a demand for me to do some kind of uh like talking uh, you know some kind of video about the original video uh, uh in sort of a comedic fashion yeah for sure and that's understandable you know and there's a difference between people who just think it's funny and goofy and don't get me wrong i know i was goofy i know that i danced around obnoxiously and it's different it's not like other stuff but as an artist you try different things oops sorry as i bumped the camera here and that's all fine, but there were some of those trolls that were taking things way too far, like getting a hold of my personal address, posting maps to my house online. They got a hold of my cell phone number, prank calling my phone, sending me threatening messages like, you can't hide and we're going to get you, uh, you know, pretending to be fans that are cutting their wrists and then I would respond trying to help them, but really what? it's someone with a sinister intention trying to book shows and waste my time and... So to me, like that's way beyond just not liking a song or a video and saying, oh, this sucks or I hate this or whatever, you know, and that's totally different from the memes and stuff mm. too. Some of the memes are just funny, joking. And I, I honestly believe that most people are not sinister and want to see bad things happen. Most of them are just kind of joking around and having fun with it, but there were definitely some that were taking it so far and like messaging my family members and prank calling my studio. And like, it, w it was crazy, man. I never thought in a million years that something like that would happen. But like I say, I, th I think a, a relatively small group of really hateful ones ruined it for everybody else. No, that's uh, that to me sort of sounds kind of part of the course. I mean, I myself, you, you probably look at my content and you see, generally in my comments or whatever i'm probably not suffering at least in the public sense the same kind of harassment that you're suffering but in the private sense i have had people grabbing my phone number sharing my phone number crank calling me uh leaving me really nasty messages uh doing death threats because i gave some album a negative review that they uh, didn't like or telling me not to show up to a certain place or asking me where I am so they can show up there too uh, in sort of a threatening fashion just because like I have some kind of differing opinion to them wow. or something um, so so let me let me state here 
uh, like like Adam said, you know, having a joke and having a meme and not liking something or liking something is one thing, but you know, going above and beyond to harass somebody just because they're kind of being creative online or sort of doing whatever they want to do and putting themselves out there and kind of taking a risk is a whole nother is a whole nother thing. And I personally do not endorse that behavior at all. And I don't endorse that behavior toward anybody who I might give a negative review or a positive review to, not in any way, shape, or form. Uh, especially, again, since I've sort of suffered that same kind of treatment too, to a degree. Um, you know, although I imagine in a lot of ways for you, it's even worse because you, you're, I, I think in a sense, trying to be, at least in the way you carry yourself, a bit more of a public figure than I am because you're trying to, you're probably trying to get yourself out there. You're trying to network with more people. You're putting phone numbers out there. You're putting business contacts out there because you want to make connections. You want to talk with other people. You know, me, for the most part, I sort of keep my bubble onto YouTube and you know my wife is always on me to sort of keep as much information of everything that I can private because she knows how obsessive people can be uh, you know that's just like kind of naturally the the way she see things uh, but you you know you're trying to do live events you know constantly you're trying to make these connections and it sort of gives these trolls a lot of opportunities to kind of take advantage uh, unfortunately yeah and that's interesting what you said there I never thought it's just kind of funny like you know I'm glad I brought this up in episode 10, even though, you know, I was kind of inappropriate in that video. And I thank well, you. Well, it's, it's really frustrating. It's really frustrating. And I've since apologized and you're being really cool about it. And it's bringing the subject up. And then you're telling me like this stuff like this has happened to you. Like I had no idea that you were getting threats and things like that too. And that makes sense because you're giving opinions about people's music. And some of those artists have huge followings and they're going to be pissed off at you, even though you're just speaking your truth. You know, I've watched some of your videos, and I, I got to say, I've never seen you be, like, vindictive or super, like, trying to be insulting. You just kind of are <laughs> honest. <coughs> and that's okay like we say right like that's one thing that's, that's I'll, I'll admit that's I've, totally been kind of, I've been kind of I've been kind of brutal before you know I'm, I'm not gonna say I've not I'm never I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say right? I'm not gonna say I've never I've never gone overboard with it but at least when I have it's it's always been sort of with the attempt of kind of having a bit of a, a, a laugh I guess in, in a way um, you know ne never like to okay. uh, sort of like I guess I guess I've never tried to go vindictive with it but you know I'm not gonna say I'm like nice 100% of the time but in my experience personally um, with sort of dealing with trolls and, and, and sort of knowing intimately some of these places online where trolls hang out before I was even doing the needle drop. Uh, uh, and, you know, it's, it's funny that you say that you're surprised, uh, you know, that, that I've dealt with some of this stuff myself. And part of the reason that that is is I don't talk about it a lot because from, from at least my personal experience with trolls, and obviously I'm kind of changing that narrative a little bit with this video because uh, I feel like this is an important thing to talk about. Um, typically trolls, the minute they smell blood or the minute they get a, right. a genuine reaction out of you, like the, they just fucking go harder. They go harder and they go harder because yeah. they want to see how far they can push that to see how big of a reaction they can get out of you. And you know, I admire you for that episode 10 that you put out, and that's like essentially why we're doing this video here. But simultaneously, that's exactly the kind of reaction that they're looking to get out of people. You know, they want to see people hurt. I know. They want to see people yeah. broken down. They want to see people at their worst. And, and they want to know that <coughs> they're, they're responsible for driving you there. Yeah, for sure. And that's why it's a double-edged sword, because... For 14 months, I just decided to take the high road and just say, ah, they'll give up, you know. I mean, how, how long can someone really go on this? I mean, but they never stopped. They started recruiting more people and influencing more people and introduce when you introduce someone in a bad way, hey, look at this, isn't this guy an idiot? Then the, the, the person you're introducing him to is going to have a negative opinion right off of the bat, mm -hmm. right? So I tried to go that way, take the high road, and I did that for months and months and months and months. And then I came out with the At Least a Million Mission video series, and it sort of flared them up mm. again, right? Because it was a buzz and people were talking about yeah. it. And insulting me and stuff is one thing, but when you're telling my young fans to kill themselves and stuff that are 12, 13, 14 years old, that's too much, yeah. you know? That actually upsets me more than any of the stuff to me. So that also was another reason why it sort of boiled over in episode 10. Mm. And I'm glad I did it 
because we're having this conversation now and I'm not proud of some of the things I said, like it's never good to fight negativity with negativity, but at the same time, you have to have a balance between not doing anything at all and standing up for yourself in a way that doesn't come across too harsh. You know what I mean? No, I know what you mean. You know, the, the thing is, um, yeah. uh, anybody in that position is going is to feel cornered. You know, and and not exactly know what to do because the thing is, like, for what you're trying to do with your music career, there's no handbook for it, and for what you're trying to, and no. for what you're trying to do with these trolls, there's no handbook for it. Um, another example is just the other day, uh, a pretty popular indie musician who I myself like quite a bit, and I uh, reviewed his latest project uh, very positively. He goes under the name Car Seat Headrest. Uh, he had to recently close down his subreddit. Uh, just because of uh, really a similar experience to what you're talking about there. Apparently there were people kind of digging up stuff about his past and they were like a kind of a, uh, there were some members of the community who were viciously harassing and attacking other members of the community in the subreddit. So he had the whole subreddit shut down because he doesn't want that sort of stuff happening in his name, sort of under his brand as it were. And, you know, it was basically kind of like a, if you guys can't behave, like we're not going to do this situation. Um, you know, which may seem like going a little overboard because maybe you could just sort of ban some of the people on the subreddit who are engaging in this behavior. I don't know how pervasive or how large the problem was, but, you know, honestly, the, there's no like silver bullet for any of this stuff. Um, you know, th no. there are just some rules personally that, that I follow and to sort of go back to an earlier point that you were making saying, oh, how long can this last? How long can this keep up? How long can this go? Um, you know, <laughs> uh, even, even when you're someone who's in my position who, you know, you haven't had, um, maybe something super crazy or super negative happen, uh, in your timeline or in your internet history for a while, it still goes on. And even when a particular thing may die down, the trolls or the people who want to make internet jokes or the people who want to get at to you, uh, they sort of latch on to a new thing. You know what I mean? Uh, it used to be at one point that like there were nothing but crazy, nasty, uh, just like really aggressive jokes about my hairline. Just like his hairline, his hairline, his hairline, his hairline. It's like, you know, it's, 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 a, little, it's a little fucked, you know, I'll admit that. <laughs> That's okay. It's not far off from mine, man. I'm using some products in there trying to get it. We're around the same age, I think. So th their time will come when they, they get a little bit older too. Right? So, you know, th th there were like months where it was nothing but hairline jokes and, and now they've completely disappeared. Okay. But, the, you know, but now there's like a new league of jokes that are out there now that are, you know, occasionally every once in a while, I'll talk to my wife and I'm just like, oh, I cannot believe they're fucking saying this now. And it's like, it's really getting to me. And it's starting to like bother me to the point where, like if a newcomer, you know, like a new fan or a new somebody were to go into the comments and, um, uh, you know, see what was going on, they might think, what the hell is this community about, you know? But honestly, yeah. it's like I, I try not to draw too much attention to it because the more attention you draw to it, the more people are going to sort of see an association and try to make that comment section represent you. I've seen a lot. You know, I've been a YouTuber for a long time. And I've, you know, made friends with a lot of YouTubers. I've seen a lot of communities on YouTube and generally YouTube comments are shit. And, you know, I've had friends who yeah. work at YouTube who, you know, I've showed them my comment sections. I've showed them my channels and they're like, yeah, you know, honestly, your comment section isn't really much nastier than some of the other channels I've seen. You know, it's, it's kind of just like a benign tumor at this point. You know, you, you don't really know what to do. And plus in, in a weird way, I feel like the upvote uh, system kind of incentivizes it because it sort of puts everybody in a competition to say the most fast, thoughtless, shocking, and hilarious thing that they can because that's instantaneously what's going to get voted up the most. So it, right, yeah. you can disable that if you prefer. You can you can put it just so that the newest comment is mm -hmm. first, so that they can't yeah you know put something stupid and then get their 20 buddies to vote it up so that it's at the top of the channel I mean, you know so there are ways even but so like that is sort of the way most comment sections work so when people go into a comment section they're already kind of like prepared to treat it that way so you know it, it just kind of is yeah. what it is in a lot of ways so i mean you know we, we've talked about the trolling thing i, I also kind of want to <laughs> want to dispel something about uh maybe uh, an assumption that a lot of people are making about you and your music based off of like uh, you know, this vlog series that you're doing, your determination here. Th there are a lot of people who are sort of working under the 
assumption that you're crazy and you don't know what you're doing and you're not in touch with reality. And, you know, explain to me and, and tell everyone that, that is, in fact, not true. You know, the thing is, the fact of the matter is that you're you're determined, you have a goal, you're trying to go after it. And I, I think maybe the lesson that's being learned here is that it's really tough. And unfortunately, you're, you're trying to make it in an industry that in a way is like kind of designed to suck money out of your pocket. I agree with a lot of what you said. It's kind of, I hate to say this, but it's sort of a sneaky, almost snaky industry in some ways. And a person I met in the music industry once told me, he said, you know what, Curtis, about 50% of the people you meet in this industry don't actually have your back, basically just want your money, will make false promises and not deliver. So one out of every two people. And I remember thinking, that can't be right, man. Like, come on, there's gotta be, it's gotta be better than that. But sure enough, as I went on, that number has proven itself to be true. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, think like, I think 50, I think 50% is a little generous. Yeah, right. And at first, it's always all good when you meet new people in this industry. And like I said, in my other video, a lot of them sort of play off of an artist's dream. Mm. And it's like, we'll take you to the next level. We'll help you with this. We'll introduce you to the right people. We'll make you blow up. Just give us a yeah, little the bit promise of money. Is they always, always need money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's always money. And as far as people, you know, thinking I'm crazy, I, I understand that. Because it's not a normal thing for someone to do this and put themselves out there like I have. And that's why some of those episodes were in retrospect, because I had to build up the courage to actually put it out there. But I said to myself, you know what, man, if you're really determined to do this, burn your boats, put it out there. And then there's no retreat. I put it out there publicly. I'm in a situation financially, there's no retreat. I have to do this. And I will do this. And I understand because if I saw some video of someone putting that up saying that I'd, I'd be like, yeah, right, you know, but I guess people that know me personally are the ones that'll be like, oh yeah, Curtis will do it. Cause they know that when I set my mind to something, I do it. I wanted to quit smoking, I did it. I wanted to quit drugs, I did it. I wanted to quit drinking, I did it. I wanted to get into shape, I did it. Whatever I put my mind to, I apply myself, I don't quit. I'll either do this or die in the process. And I want people to remember that when the Wright brothers were building their prototype airplane, they were crazy. When, uh, Conor McGregor said he was going to come up in the UFC and be a legend. People thought he was crazy. When Henry Ford was trying to invent a horseless carriage, people thought he was crazy, right? So I understand where they're coming from, but I think as they get to know me and as they see the progress, they're going to start to realize that, wow, this guy actually is serious about this. It's not a publicity stunt. He's not actually joking. And I think they're going to start to believe as they see things progress. Well, something I want to point out is that, at least from my observation, your story isn't that unique in that the amount of money and the amount of sort of personal investment you have in trying to make this work. Because in my email inbox, I get PR emails every day, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of per week. And PR does not come free. And a vast majority of the artists that are getting pitched to me in my email inbox, like, I, I don't care for them very much. I don't see them getting posted other places. And I have to imagine that some of these groups, some of them have recorded multiple albums since I started doing what I'm doing and have gone numerous album cycles with a variety of different PR firms. And they're probably unloading thousands of dollars per each recording session, thousands of dollars per PR campaign you know, potentially tons of money on a tour if they're not making money on that tour. Uh, there are some pretty popular uh, musical artists and, and YouTube-based uh, musicians that I'm aware of that have come forward saying things like, uh, uh, you know, we went out on tour, we had numerous sold-out shows, uh, we made maybe like 500 grand on the tour in profits, but we had maybe about like 46 uh, uh, you know, or, or $460,000 or maybe even more in like expenses, you know, or, or at least, uh, uh, the way that they spent their money anyway. So I, I guess, uh, again, to my point earlier that this, this, 
this industry in a lot of ways uh, kind of thrives off of the lifeblood of the people who are starting at the bottom, hoping that they can get somewhere. And uh, when you kind of eventually do break through, you actually can like kind of form something for yourself. But uh, even in that situation, you know, you could get offered a deal down the road. That's one of these uh, 360 deals that are often talked about where yeah. labels are not just wanting a portion of the record sales. They want a portion of your live events and your merchandise and any commercial deals you do and, and stuff like that. It's uh, it's really predatory. And, and as you said before, it, it's all because uh, a lot of these people in the industry are kind of trying to thrive off of the fact that this is your dream and that's what you're focused on. You're not focused on whether or not you're getting screwed. You're focused on whether or not you're achieving this this goal, this dream that you've set for yourself. Yeah, <coughs> everything you said, yeah. It's 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 not an easy road. Like, I, I'm curious, how many people that are watching this can say they know a famous musician? Mm. And I don't just mean someone who performs at a pub now and then, but someone like, like you know, a group like Maroon 5 or Lady Gaga or like a Chance the Rapper. How many people can say that they are one point of separation away from knowing someone like that? And the answer is most people can't say that because it's, there's so many rappers and there's so many singers, but only a very small percentage of them make up most of the market and most of the income, right? So a lot of people turn around before they get to that point and I don't I don't blame them but this takes courage you have to try different things you have to be willing to spend you know no matter what people say about me they have to agree that I'm persistent and I don't give up and I'm I'm really putting myself out there and I think a lot of musicians are probably either not as far along as me or in more debt than me but they don't have the courage to turn on a camera and tell the world yeah. You know what I mean? And I still feel, yeah, 200 grand, it's a lot, but is it really when you're talking about in the future getting millions and millions of streams and product endorsements, you know, like a shoe deal or a shirt deal, doing tours, bringing in lots of revenue, online stores, merchandise on a, on a huge scale, you know, $200,000 really Canadian, by the way, it's more for you guys in the States. Um, it really isn't that much money when you think of it that way. Like, for example, does it snow where you are? Uh, yeah, in New England, yeah. Okay, so next time you're driving and uh, a snowplow or a grader drives beside you, last time I heard, those are worth about $250,000, mm. okay? So that kind of puts a perspective on it. If you zoom out on the earth and you see that one little tiny grader in that one little city, when you look at it that way, it's not that much compared to the possibility. It's a lot if you're making 10 or $15 an hour and that's your salary cap and you can never ever make more than that, then yeah, $200,000 is a really scary number. <laughs> but some people just don't have the vision to sort of see that and see the possibilities. And that's what I see. I understand my circumstances now, but I'm not trying to stay here. I'm trying to go to the vision that I see inside of my mind. So b before we... Uh end off uh, tell me what your future plans are from this point i know you have a new single out or coming out uh, you know what what's the sort of release schedule looking like right now what, what are your immediate plans for the future what you're uh, going to be doing next to just basically uh, achieve what you're trying to achieve well i have like you say there's no exact playbook yeah. everybody's story is a little bit different but what's going on with me right now is uh in january i released a new single called Time is Precious, which I encourage people to check out, especially if they've only heard original, because it's a totally different vibe, and it'll sort of show people that I can do different things. We'll, uh, we'll link to that uh, song. Uh, we'll link to that song down below. Okay, thanks. Yeah, check that out. Um, I'm working on another song called Friends Over Enemies, which I think is really fitting regarding this whole situation, <laughs> given that, I don't know if you and I were necessarily enemies, uh -huh. but you know, we were kind of on bad terms and here we are coming together doing a video. And I think that that's a good example for kids, people all over the world, man. You know, you might have a fight with someone at high school last week and you could end up turning that person into a friend, you know? So there's that song that I'm working on. I have another project called The Underdog, which is a fitting title given my circumstance, but uh, that's in the works, but I would like to partner with a label to release that 
because I don't really want to keep releasing albums that sort of go stale. You know, some people release an album and there's a huge plan and lots of resources behind it. That's kind of my new focus is not just pumping out the music. Don't just pump out the music and then let it sit there. You know, really have a good plan, have a good team. So that's that's what I'm working on right now. And uh, I try different things. And I just want to make one more uh, mention of something. And that is that original, a lot of people didn't like it, okay? But a lot of people did like it. But I want people to know this. As a real artist, you try different things, right? You try this way. You try that way. That's being artistic. And even someone like uh, Beethoven, I think he had something like 600 compositions don't quote me exactly. I, I, something like he was that. prolific. A really big number. Yeah. And we, he's famous for maybe six of those. Right? So the point is, you try a lot of things. Sometimes one you think is going to be awesome, people don't like it. Sometimes one you thought, uh, you thought was great, they don't like it. Or one that you don't like, they really love, you know. So I think it's about moving on, on to the next song. Keep trying things that are different. I don't like listening to an album where every song sounds the same. And I'm sure you're the same way. You review albums all the time. Tracks one through 10, the beat is different, but the flow is the same. You know, it's basically the same flow and rhyme pattern over every track. I don't do that. And although you might not like everything, you might not like one, but you might really like the other one, you know? So I wanted to leave that on the table. And I'm definitely going to keep, keep pushing forward, try to surround myself with new people uh, you know i think an artist is only as good as their team and i could use some new team members some people that want to network i know people have reached out to me they want to do like independent filmmaking with me or different things or send me beats and i have uh, other people are doing my email now and if you want to reach out uh hit up u a inquiries at gmail.com the letter u the letter a inquiries at gmail.com dot com and i'll leave it there as far as that goes all right well thanks for coming on and talking with me and just uh you know opening up about what you've been going through allowing me to open up about that as well and just like create yeah. a situation where we can have a conversation about this out in the open and just like say that it's 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 happening to everybody neither of us are accepting of that and um you know just like give us a little bit more insight into what your logic is going into trying to achieve what you're trying to achieve Thanks, man, for sure. And it's not just us. It's not just you. It's not just me that are going through some of this cyber harassment and stuff. It's kids. I worry about the kids. You and I were <coughs> roughly 30-year-old men, okay? We have fortified minds, thick skin, obviously. We, we go on camera a lot so we can take it more than they can. I worry about the kids, and we got to try to help stop that and show people that you can come together. So, uh, you know. I think this has been great, man. I appreciate you being so good about it. And it just goes to show that when you speak on how you actually feel, things will work themselves out. And uh, I appreciate you having me on today to talk about it. For sure. It. And, uh, you know, I, I have no doubt that even though we're being serious, there'll be some ridiculous comments in the comment section. But, you know, still, I, I oh, guess yeah. keep in mind that your, your average person, you know, let, let, let's this video is going to have tens of thousands of views, uh, many, many, many views. However, there's not going to be a comment for every view. You know what I mean? There's going to be a bunch of crazy comments down in the comments. But I, I guess, you know, that's that's an illustration of the fact that most people are just silently and normally enjoying the video and just watching the content. You know, meanwhile, you have yeah. a very small but very vocal minority of people who are going to take it to the extreme in the comment section, who are going to take it to the extreme online, even though it may seem like a lot because they are very vocal and they are very persistent. Um I guess just keep in mind that it's it's at the end of the day, it's just a vast minority of the people who are uh, engaging with my content, your content, everyone's content online. And, uh, and in a lot of ways, it, 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 it only affects you as much as you let it, you know. But uh, again, like you said, uh, it's, yeah. uh, it's not something you and I endorse. And uh, um, I thank, again, thank you very much for talking about it. So uh, somewhere on the screen is another video that you can check out. Again, I have linked to uh, your latest single in the description box, as well as putting uh, some other relevant information down there. And uh, thanks for making the time and talking with me. No problem, man. If, if I'm ever out on the East Coast of the United States, I'll take you out for lunch and we'll do a video together Hell yeah. or something, all right? Hell yeah. Okay, man. Hell yeah. Have a good day, Anthony.